Hey, you guys, Erin here. I am back with another moon update for you. Today, I'm going to be talking about the new super moon we have coming up here on Sunday, March 10th. This new moon peaks at exactly 1 a.m. Pacific time and takes place in the sign of Pisces, 20 degrees Pisces. So hopefully you guys are getting familiar with the routine at this point. This is a time to manifest new beginnings or growth that is related to this zodiac sign of Pisces. Approximately six months from now, we'll be having a full moon in the sign of Pisces. That would be the peak of this growth cycle. Now, what I always do is I pull out my journal. I write down the growth I want to experience that's related to that zodiac sign. And then I like to take a few gemstones that resonate well with the sign the moon is transiting through, put them on top of my journal and find a special place to put my journal on top of and I just leave it there for a few nights. Sometimes I'll just leave it there for one night. It just depends on how I'm feeling. So in this recording, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this sign of Pisces for you in detail. I'll also be pulling up the chart and showing you some other very prominent astrological forces we will be receiving at the time of this new super moon. Really, really interesting stuff going on. I mean, as usual, but this is it's a very, very mystical and psychic transit. I'm really looking forward to breaking this down for you guys. But I'll also be talking about certain parts of the body that are ruled by the sign of Pisces because these parts of our body become more sensitive when the moon transits to the sign of Pisces. But it's definitely most prominent when it's a new moon or a full moon in the sign of Pisces. And for this one, we've got sun, moon, Neptune, and Saturn all going through the sign of Pisces. So it's definitely a good idea to be paying a little extra attention to these parts of our bodies during this lunar transit, especially if you've got something in your natal chart in the sign of Pisces. So we'll also be talking about some potential herbal remedies to help support these parts of our body during this lunar transit. And of course, I will be mentioning some gemstones that resonate well with the sign of Pisces. Now, if you don't make it to the end of this recording, you can always look in the description below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can always look in the description below and find an extensive list of stones that resonate well with the sign the moon is transiting through, but please do not feel like you're missing out on something if you don't have any of those gemstones. If you want to manifest more gemstones into your life, a new moon is a perfect time to do it, especially this new moon, new super moon in Pisces, which is a very metaphysical kind of energy. And if you want to start learning about and working with the metaphysical beneficial properties of gemstones, this is a perfect time to be writing that in your journal. Okay, so there's that. Let's, oh, and also one more thing I want to mention here. Of course, we all experience this new super moon at 20 degrees Pisces as a collective, but it's also incredibly unique to each and every one of us. And so much of this depends on your own natal chart. First of all, do you have anything in the sign of Pisces? Really, any degree of the sign of Pisces, because there's so much going on in the sign of Pisces. Or maybe opposing that in the sign of Virgo, or maybe trining this stuff in, in, in the sign of Cancer or Scorpio. But one really simple trick to learn is look to see which house in your natal chart the sign of Pisces comes through. Of course, even if you don't have any planets or any celestial bodies or anything in the sign of Pisces, it's still somewhere in your natal chart. Every single zodiac sign is in all of our natal charts, and it's got to be coming through a house in your natal chart coming through a certain area of your life. It could be coming through your house of karma, your house of transformation, your house of career, your house of self, if you're a Pisces rising, coming through your house of finances, your house of physical health. There's all these different areas of your life that this could be coming through. If you've had a reading with me, you can go back and review the video recording to see which area of your life is being activated by this lunar trans, by anything astrological. If you haven't had a reading with me and you're curious about it, you can schedule your astrology reading through ErinWageAstrology.com. And I will say this, this is an excellent time to be investing in an astrology reading as we have eclipses coming up extremely powerful eclipses coming up here over the next month really like this um, this new moon is almost like the calm before the storm of the eclipses so and to see which area of your life is being activated by those eclipses coming up is always very very fascinating and very beneficial i find it very helpful to be familiar with this stuff Okay, so there's that. You can also get your chart calculated for free on so, astro.com. It's probably the most commonly used. You just have to know your birth date, time, and location, and you can pull that stuff up yourself and learn this stuff for yourself. I know not everybody's got the time to do that. That's why astrologers are here to help. Okay, so the sign of Pisces. This is what we call the mutable 
water sign. Now, when I say mutable, what I'm talking about is adaptability. Sign of Pisces tends to be very, very adaptable, which of course is pros and cons to that. The sign of Pisces, it's it's represented by the fish. I'll go deeper into this, but the fish that's like swimming up, it's like, oh, look at that shiny thing. It's like a goal. I'm going after this goal. It's like, look at that shiny goal over there. I'm going after it. And then all of a sudden, almost just before you reach that little shiny thing, whoop, something over here is even more shiny. Whoop, I'm going to go that way. Whoop, I'm going to go that way. A lot of Pisces will have a, a difficult time uh, like setting, like I want to, this is what I want to major in in college. And then they'll change it, you know, it's 15 different times through trying to get their college degree, that sort of thing, or change their career a lot of times, that sort of thing. Now, does that mean every single Pisces is going to be like, that absolutely not because there's so much more to the natal chart let's say you're a pisces sun but a taurus rising with a capricorn moon that really changes things so of course there's things that will modify this but the sign of pisces in and of itself tends to be very very adaptable now in the element of water water is very strongly associated with emotions in astrology the sign of pisces is very very emotional energy it's very naturally empathetic okay this sign is ruled by Jupiter and Neptune, okay? In real traditional ancient astrology, it is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is a very faith-based energy, also very charitable energy. The motto for the sign of Pisces is, I believe, okay? That's very Jupiterian energy. But in more modern times, it's considered to be ruled by Neptune. In my opinion, it's it's clearly ruled by both. I, you know, that's debatable. They, I definitely can understand Jupiter's rulership over the sign of Pisces, but it makes a whole heck of a lot more sense to me when we include Neptune as a as another ruler, okay? Because Neptune's job breaks down the psychic boundaries, okay? The sign of Pisces is considered to be the most psychic sign of the zodiac. Scorpio and Cancer and other signs can be too, but really Pisces, like if you just look up keywords to describe the sign of Pisces, you're generally gonna see the word psychic under there. And a lot of that comes from Neptune's rulership, okay? Neptune is the god of the sea, okay? This is, it's very powerful energy that comes through with this Neptunian influence, but it does, sometimes doesn't feel so powerful because it's very diffusive. Neptune's influence is, I love how Judith Hill, my favorite astrologer, how she describes Neptune as like getting into a hot tub and it's like, ah. Oh. You know, it's just so relaxing. Okay. That's very Neptunian, but it's also powerful. In fact, Neptune rules over dreams. A lot of people, in fact, I'm going to have to throw in a little interesting story here. A lot of people have been clients I've been talking to, and then I even just received a couple of messages about all of a sudden their people are having these wild dreams and remembering their dreams. And that just happened to me this morning. I Well, I, I usually wake up around 4.30 in the morning to let my dog out to use the restroom, you go potty outside, but then I go back to sleep. And it was after that, I, after I went back to sleep, <clears throat> I had a dream. This was so Neptunian. I had a dream that I saved a puppy from drowning. It was like, I say like Neptunian and Piscean because it was in the water. I don't even know, it was like some strange body of water and I see a puppy that was drowning and it was a big, it was a puppy, but it was like a big puppy. And I'm not a very, like, I'm fairly tall, but I'm not like a <laughs> big lady. I'm pretty thin. But I was like picking this puppy up out of the water and it wasn't moving. And I, in real life, I don't, I don't know how to do CPR or anything like that. But in my dream, I did. In my dream, I was like, blowing air into the dog's mouth and all of a sudden it was like spitting up water because you know it was inhaling water in and I saved this puppy from the water and I don't, I'm not somebody who generally remembers my dreams very well so that was a very very Piscean and Neptunian experience okay so that's Neptune again the, the god of the sea now, also, Neptune can have a lot to do with things like drugs and addiction, okay? When I say drugs, it's not so much like mm, stimulants, you know, not so much like, uh, you know, cocaine or something, like maybe a little bit sort of, but Neptune is more like opiate kind of drugs, drugs that really, you know, can actually constrict the, the pupils, make the, the pupils smaller. In fact, Pisces rules over the parasympathetic nervous system, which is actually what makes the, the pupils uh, get smaller. Okay, that sort of thing, very like 
woo, very relaxing kinds of, of, of effects we receive from Neptune. In fact, a lot of people who've got a heavy dose of Neptune in their natal chart sometimes will seem like they're on drugs, even when they're not on drugs, but then also a lot of people who've got a heavy dose of Neptune in their natal chart tend to enjoy drugs. And in fact, the sign of Pisces, some Pisces, especially moon and Pisces people, and Pisces sun as well, they're too sensitive. They can't they can't indulge in, in things that are, even if it's just like some sort of prescription medication, it's like it's too strong for them because they're already like that. Okay, that's very, this Piscean, Neptunian influence. Now, also, I, Neptune again has. In fact, if, I don't know. I don't know if I already said this or not. But if you look up in the uh, Encyclopedia of Medical Astrology, you, if you look up Neptune, you'll see it's like Neptune puts holes in our psychic boundaries. Everybody has boundaries. Okay, uh, some are stronger than others, and Pisces tends to have weak boundaries, especially psychic boundaries. Like they'll unintentionally pick up somebody else's feelings, somebody else's emotions, or know what somebody else is thinking. A lot of times can't really get away with lying to a Pisces, okay? Because that's it's Neptune puts its psychic porousness, okay? Puts holes in those psychic boundaries. Okay, so there's that. Now also Pisces, the model for the sign of Pisces is I believe, I already mentioned that, Pisces is represented by two fish, two fish that are tied together and swimming in opposite directions. Now I've heard a couple of different mm, connections as to what this really means. And I'll just tell you, well, I've heard of quite a few actually, but I'll tell you the two that really resonate with me most accurately. One is that it's like one fish is in the physical realm. The other fish is swimming around in the spirit realm and they're tied together. So the one in the spirit realm doesn't just float off and swim away. A lot of times Pisces people will have a difficult time like paying attention in school because it's a, they're just kind of drifting off into, into daydream land. Again, Pisces has a lot to do with dreams, okay? Uh, but also the two fish tied together swimming opposite directions because that can have a lot to do with the constant shifting of emotions. Again, water is basically emotions in astrology and these two fish swimming opposite directions. Pisces, their emotions can be very, very shifty, okay? And not shifty like sharp, uh, you know, jerking changes, but more like, whoa, I'm feeling this way one minute. Whoa, now I'm feeling this way. And a lot of that also has to do because they're constantly picking up other people's energies. Again, Pisces people tend to not have very good boundaries. Okay, so how do you want to grow in these ways? I mean, the real beauty of this is that with Neptune, it's been going through Pisces for the last 12 years, still has two more years to go. Now, keep in mind, Neptune, God of the sea, who rules ne uh, rules Pisces, is going through the sign of Pisces. Now, not everybody gets to be alive while Neptune's going through Pisces. Uh, Neptune takes, I believe, it's like 150 years to go around the whole zodiac. So it's a little bit of a gift to be experiencing Neptune going through Pisces. A lot of people are having these extremely powerful spiritual awakenings or or just overall like very Piscean experiences uh, that can enhance the psychic capabilities and enhance the mysticism and enhance the adaptability, enhance the empathy. Okay, so how do you want to grow in these in these ways? This is an incredible opportunity to be manifesting that kind of growth into your life. Okay, so I hope it made sense of that. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the chart here. And what I work with is a geocentric Western astrology. So with that said, what we're looking at here is basically a snapshot of the tropical zodiac at the time of this new supermoon. As I work with geocentric, we put Earth right here in the middle of this thing. These right here around the out part of the wheel, those are the symbols for the for the celestial bodies. Like this is Uranus, where I'm moving my mouse. There's Jupiter. Here's Chiron. Here's the North Node. Here's Mercury. Here's Neptune. Now, right here, let's start with talking about the sun and the moon. Here's the sun. Here's the moon. You can see that they are both at 20 degrees and 17 minutes Pisces. Now, this there's a slightly larger version of the glyph for the sign of Pisces where I'm moving my mouse right now. Okay, that is, because I know some people watch this on their phone, that is the glyph, when you pull up your natal chart, you want to see which house, when I'm talking about the houses, I'm talking about these things that look like a slice of pie, they all mean different things, and they represent areas of our life where things manifest. Somewhere in your natal chart 
is this glyph for the sign of Pisces. Look to see which house it is in. Look to see what that house represents. And that's how you can know what area of your life this is coming through. Okay, so like a lot of people up here is the 10th house, which is the house of career. A lot of people who have Pisces up here in their house of career will uh, have some kind of a, a career that's involved with spirituality or being a psychic or something along those lines. Okay, so there's that. Hopefully you guys are being able to follow along. And if you can't follow along, if, this is, if some of this is too much, you know, just going over your head, that's perfectly okay. Just take what you can and roll with it because astrology is pretty complex. And uh, we learn it in baby steps. Okay, so first of all, anytime we have a new moon, it means that the sun and the moon are in the exact same spot. The way it works is the sun takes a whole year to go around the zodiac. Meanwhile, the moon goes around there every single month. So it's like the moon every single month catches up to the sun, and that's when we have a new moon. In Western astrology, the moon is the mother, the sun is the father. When they when we have a new moon, we have the mother and father coming together. And they're making a baby. They're making this energetic baby that grows over these next six months. And we all get to tap into that energetic baby and grow with it over the next six months. That's why manifesting with new moons works so powerfully. Okay. So at 20 degrees and 17 minutes, Pisces, this puts us in something called the second decan of this Pisces, sorry, third decan of this Piscean energy, which gives us a little twist of Scorpio energy as well. Now, Scorpio is like, the next sign over for psychic capabilities. So this is very, very, very powerful, intuitive energies going on. Some of you have got to be feeling this. I just, I know it. In fact, I, I can't, I could tell you so many examples of, of clients who I've been talking to. I've even had people scheduling appointments with me because they're like, all of a sudden I'm having these really crazy dreams or all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm having these like psychic experiences. I totally knew this lady was lying to me. Oh, that sort of thing. Well, look at all this energy we have to support that kind of influence. Okay. So let's start with, here's Neptune, the symbol for Neptune. Okay. Now, and again, Neptune has been going to Pisces uh, for 12 years and still have another two years to go. And so Neptune beating through this sign of Pisces, we're all experiencing that. And I would imagine, since this is all talking about the sign of Pisces, there's probably some Pisces who are watching this recording. Now, if you are in, let's say, the end of the Pisces season, let's say your birthday is between like March 15th and March 19th, you, you've either just had Neptune go over your sun or you're going to just about to have Neptune go over your sun. That's the kind of transit where... Sometimes it could be really hard to concentrate. And, and not only that, but if you're a Pisces at all, at one point over these last 12 years, Neptune went over your sun. There had to have been a time over these last 12 years. Uh, if you were born between what, February 18th and uh, March, let's say 15th, and that means at some point over these last 12 years, Neptune went over your sun. And at that point, it's it's either like, full on psychic downloads, or maybe you fell into a drug addiction. I actually have a client that did get a very, very carried away with all kinds of interesting things, uh, mind altering uh, substances when Neptune went over his son. So that's something to be, you know, just careful about being mindful of. I certainly am not opposed to people experimenting with getting into altered states of consciousness as long as it's done in a healthy way. Uh, you know, there's, herbal things, preferably in my opinion, over prescription stuff. That's my own opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own. Okay. So there's that. Now here is Saturn. Saturn's been going through Pisces since um, March of 2023 and will be there till the end of February of 2026. So this is an interesting transit because Saturn is strict, rigid, discipline, responsibilities. Okay, Pisces just wants to be the free spirit. Pisces is the sign of oneness. Like, why can't we all just get along? Pisces responsibilities are about spiritual responsibilities. Again, that doesn't mean that every single person who's a Pisces is going to be like that because there's so much more to the natal chart. But the sign of Pisces in and of itself, like, doesn't consider... Uh, going to work and showing up at seven o'clock until five o'clock every five days a week and, you know, turning in this document at a certain time. Pisces is not like that. It's not rigid like that. Pisces is flowy. So Saturn is like that. And so Saturn going through Pisces, he doesn't function the way he wants to there. That's for sure. 
but it also very well could, as a lot of people very well could be getting very serious about their spiritual practices or say Saturn actually rules over when a crystal is forming, like the formation of a crystal and versus Pisces is more like the metaphysical. If you don't know what I mean by metaphysical, metaphysical basically means it's like beyond physical. Okay. Metaphysical is about working with crystals and potentially like tarot cards and all sorts of things that are of an unearthly nature, uh, unphysical nature. And so Pisces can have a lot to do with the, the metaphysical benefits of gemstones and crystals. This is a really, especially if you got something in your chart, I mean, of course it kind of depends on what it is, but if you got something in your chart that's near 11 degrees Pisces, Saturn's trying to crack the whip on you to get disciplined to something. And it's a perfect opportunity to be studying about the, again, crystals overall. My favorite gemstone book is the Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Hall. That book talks about different the, the why crystals form differently where they came from what planet they are you know most strongly associated with what zodiac signs all, all kinds of great stuff excellent book so there's that and not only that but this is for some of you you might know what a midpoint is look at this we've got the the sun and the moon the the new moon new super moon is at the ex basically very, very close to being the exact midpoint of here's Saturn at 11 degrees Pisces, here's Neptune at 27 degrees Pisces. Okay, so that's about a nine degree orb between Saturn and the sun and moon, and about a seven degree orb between Neptune and the sun and moon. That's a very, very close midpoint, making this new super moon even more powerful. Okay, so that's that's really. Really interesting stuff, in my opinion. Okay, now let's talk about this aspect going over to Uranus. Okay, so we see some of these green lines going from here to here. The one I want to focus on is we have Uranus right here. Okay, now I don't want to put too much emphasis on this because I've talked so much about Uranus going through Taurus for the past few years, uh, past six years, I think. Okay, now because Uranus has been going through Taurus since, I believe, 2018. But overall, Uranus influences revolutionary changes, okay? Uranus says, I don't want to continue to do things the way we have been doing them this whole time. Uranus is like, I want a new revolutionary way of doing it. Things like inventions. Uranus has rulership over technology and electricity. Uranus is a very electrical energy, okay? And struggles going through the sign of Taurus because Taurus is like stable, calm, slow, steady Earth. It's the fixed Earth sign. It's very debilitated there, but it's it's going on. But then we've got Uranus going through Taurus basically till uh, 2026. So uh, very, very revolutionary changes going on with all things Earth. Okay, Taurus has a lot to do with money, finances. Uh, also agriculture, our food. I've mentioned this so many times in videos before. Just look at what's going on with our food. Some of this stuff can be very uh, beneficial and revolutionary, but a lot of it's really creepy. Uh, you know, just genetically modified and up the wazoo, kinds of weird stuff going on. Personally, I'm somebody who I try not to eat like heavily processed foods, you know, and, and that sometimes can be difficult for a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian most of my life, uh, but I'm not somebody who's going to eat like a beyond meat, like something that's beyond meat burger. I don't know if you've heard of those. I know some people love them. I don't, certainly wouldn't recommend eating them all the time because they're so heavily processed. Now that is very Uranus and Taurus energy. Um, and, you know, for some people, they might really appreciate that. But anyway, hopefully you guys get the gist of where I'm going with this. And just think about, again, Taurus has a lot to do with finances. Think about all the changes that are going on with our finances. I mean, even just the fact that there's like now Venmo and, you know, it's like Venmo is taking over the world of finances, that sort of thing. That's very technological Uranus energy. But what I'm trying to make here is that this green line that's going from here to here, of course, there's a couple of them, but we're just going to focus on the main one here, that... It's a called sextile. It's approximately a 60 degree angle. In fact, it's a very, very, very close to exact. This is 19 degrees and 53 minutes. That's very close to 20 degrees. Okay. So that is a very strong 
connection, conversation that's going on between this new moon, the opportunity for new beginnings, over to the thing that wants to create revolutionary changes, Uranus, okay? So it's like opportunities, like, hey, this is going to open up an opportunity for me to do this, uh, whatever it is, you, you come up with the ideas, but that is a very, very strong aspect. And also, I got to point this out. So here's Jupiter in Taurus, who's creeping up on Uranus. I think it's the exact conjunction on April 20th. What I'm talking about, here's Uranus. Uranus goes slower than Jupiter. Here's Jupiter. Do, 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 do. Over between now and April 20th, Jupiter is getting closer, 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 closer to Uranus. That, what Jupiter does is he expands energies. Okay, Jupiter, he's going to, Get close to Uranus and go make that Uranus and Taurus energy just a, a more, <laughs> a, a bigger deal, a bigger deal. That's Jupiter's job. It could be very, very, very revolutionary. What's so interesting is that, so Uranus wants freedom. Uranus does not want to be like confined. People who have a lot of strong Uranus energy in their natal chart, they almost can be kind of abrupt. Like when somebody's born with Uranus on their ascendant, they are the kind of people that like, bust into a room. They don't mean to be rude or anything. They're just like, boom, oh, come here. <laughs> uh, and, and Jupiter, and not only that, but they can tend to like be a little spasmatic. They need to get up and do something really quick. They need to move around. And Jupiter is very different than Uranus, but also wants freedom. Both of these guys want freedom. Jupiter is like the the one that wants to go off on to wild adventures and, and, people who have a lot of Jupiter in their natal chart, they also sometimes will be kind of like they move around a lot. They are people who have, you know, move their legs a lot, that they kind of shake their legs while they're sitting down, tap their knees, something like that, tap their foot. Um, but also Jupiter is this energy of like long distance travel. Somebody who's got a lot of strong Jupiter energy in their natal chart, you don't want to try and hold them down, like be the kind of person that's like, no, I want you to stay home tonight, sort of thing. So Jupiter energy is, and same with Uranus in different ways, but they're both kind of dramatic, okay? And with that conjunction going on, all those things I said about that sign of Taurus, that's getting stronger and stronger and stronger, okay? And I'm not saying anything major is going to happen on April 20th, but between now and then just think about that especially if you've got something in your natal chart let's say especially if you've got something near 20 degrees Taurus I think the exact conjunctions are the 20 or 21 degrees Taurus and so yeah I think it is 21 degrees Taurus in my opinion if you've got something at 20 degrees Taurus that's there's going to be big changes going on okay and probably already has been okay so Let's jump on down and talk about all this Aquarius energy going on. So here's Venus. Venus is just finishing up in the sign of Aquarius. A day or two after this new moon, she'll be in the sign of Pisces. Uh, now, this is interesting. In fact, let's kind of talk about them together a little bit. Here's Mars and here's Venus. They've both been going through the sign of Aquarius, which could be very creative energy. Um, the sign of Aquarius, if you think about all those things I just said about Uranus, which is very revolutionary. Uranus is one of Aquarius's rulers. The sign of Aquarius is very revolutionary. It's the humanitarian. It's the sign that's very strongly associated with uh, things that are involved, like the, the internet, you know, creating the internet. And all of a sudden, everybody can talk to each other and share information through technology. Revolutionary changes. It's a very rebellious energy. It's an extremely dynamic energy. It's a highly, highly intellectual energy. And with Venus and Mars both going through the sign of Aquarius together, especially if it's hitting something in your chart. If you've got something, say, really, oh gosh, I can't remember what degree they can conjunct. Say between 12 and, and 30 degrees Aquarius, Venus and Mars came up uh, fairly close together and hit that thing in your chart. And all of a sudden you have like a creative idea, invent something or just a new idea, maybe even like a little... Maybe a little idealistic, but but also again, just overall, like, oh, that's why didn't I think of that before? Sort of energy. Uh, but again, so Venus is almost out of of this sign of Aquarius. She'll be moving into the sign of Pisces. It's either one or two days after this new moon, and she will be a little sense of relief for Venus. Venus, her favorite zodiac sign is to be in the sign of Pisces. If you all these things that I'm talking about, the sign of Pisces, it's very very feminine. 
it's very, um, that doesn't mean that somebody can't be masculine if they're Pisces, by the way, but because again, there's so much more in the natal chart, but the sign of Pisces in and of itself is very flowy. It's the sign of oneness, like everybody, let's just get along and be harmonious together. And Venus is, you know, planet of love. Venus is the, the influencer of things that are harmonious. Venus is all about beauty and, and relationships and and love, all sorts of wonderful things. And so when she gets in, that's a, an exalted placement. That's Venus's favorite place to be. So when she gets into Pisces, oh, that's going to be a lot of Pisces energy going on. My goodness. Okay, pay attention to your dreams and your intuition, people, because this is very, very interesting energies. And in fact, the sign of Aquarius is also incredibly intuitive, just in a totally different way. They have like, um, like little... <laughs> Little antennas or like radar signals they pick up on the sign of Aquarius does. Okay, now also here we have Pluto. Okay, I don't want to talk about this too much because I've already talked about Pluto so much. But so Pluto, the bringer of very very powerful transformation, is working extremely powerfully in the very early degrees of that sign of Aquarius. So if you think about all these things I just said about the sign of Aquarius. Pluto's bringing in the powerful transformational process over the next 20 years. And if I'm going to be very technical here, Pluto, it will retrograde back into the sign of Capricorn very briefly later on this year. But for the most part, Pluto, <laughs> when the elections come up, I'm definitely going to put a little more focus on Pluto. But Pluto is bringing a very powerful transformational process to all things Aquarius. Okay, very it's like what I keep thinking about is like virtual reality and, you know, people, everything is through the the interweb and, and everything. I'm talking like everything that's that's Pluto's like bringing like power to that stuff. There might even be some kind of a collapse uh, because Pluto could do that. Pluto can bring complete destruction, but then rebuild something that's more powerful. And so that's going on with this sign of Aquarius over these next 20 years. All right. So let's see, where should we go next? Let's talk about Mercury who just moved into the sign of Aries. Now, Mercury, anything that's at zero degrees is really, really strong. Okay. Mercury is the ruler of our mental function and our communication skills and our nervous system. And Aries is ruled by Mars. Okay. Aries, I do that because it's the cardinal fire sign. Aries, I can't wait till Aries season. Oh my goodness. Aries season will be next and it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting one because we're going to have those two eclipses in the sign of Aries. But Aries is like ready to go. Aries is the, the very first sign of the Zodiac. Okay. It's like the sign that says, let's go. In fact, the sign of Pisces is the very last sign of the zodiac okay pisces is the mutable water sign it's the end of all the mutable signs come in just before we're going to change seasons okay we're still in winter once aries season starts in fact aries season starts on march 19th this year sometimes it'll start on the 20th or the 21st it's on march 19th this year in the evening i guess it depends on where you live in the world but in uh, pacific time it's around 8 p.m a little after 8 p.m. that the sun moves into the sign of Aries. <clears throat> and so Pisces, that's why it has to do with dreams. It's like the the last sign. It's it's connected more to the spirit realm and sleepiness and drowsiness. A lot of Pisces people need a lot of sleep. A lot of Pisces people are just are cold all the time. And then all of a sudden, on March 19th, the sun moves into Aries and it's like, go, oh. because <laughs> Aries is the, it's the infant and it's really, it's, Aries really represents like when the sun is rising and the birds start chirping and that sort of thing. And so Mercury, the ruler of our mental function, popping into zero degrees Aries, all of a sudden everybody's like, doo, 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 doo. the neurons are connecting quicker. And it, again, it's so much of this depends on your own natal chart. Okay, do you have anything near zero degrees Aries? Because if you do, Mercury, nervous system, mental function and communication skills is going, hey, let's activate this. Let's make this happen. Let's do something here. Okay, now let's talk about uh, Chiron and the North Node here, also going through Aries. So the North Node, that's the pump that brings celestial energy in. Okay, again, I work with geocentric. So we put Earth right here in the middle of this thing. Here's the North Node where energy comes in. Here is the South Node. That's where energy goes out. So energy's coming in through the sign of Aries. 
that's going on, by the way, the nodes will be in, uh, the north node will be in Aries and the south node will be in Libra basically for another year. Well, till January of 2025. But so this north node, bringing that aggressive Aries energy in, hitting earth and then draining out the sign of Libra, which Libra is the sign of charm and balance and harmony and justice and fairness and uh, relationships. And we have the drain point going through the sign of Libra. I do find it very interesting that we are having an election. Oh gosh, it's just, it doesn't look like, I don't mean to sound like a pessimist because I'm not, but it doesn't really seem like good energy for having an election. It doesn't seem like it's going to be, it could be aggressive. It could be a frustrating election. I really don't think elections are frustrating for a lot of people. And I have my own opinions on all of that. Personally, I don't participate in any of it. And I always get harped on anytime anybody asks me about that. I get, I, I've basically been ridiculed for honestly telling people I don't participate in it. I think it's fascinating to watch. To me, it's like watching a show, watching the elections go on. That's that's why I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but it's to me, I I don't I I don't vote. Sorry guys, I don't vote. I haven't. I actually I did a long long time ago, and then I just completely gave up on the system. I completely. I do not have any kind of faith in the just so called justice system that is put in place. Uh, and so I just try to do my own thing, try my best to not participate in any of that. And again, I know I'll probably get some comments about that, but whatever is what it is. All right. So here's Chiron, which is right next to the North Node. So Chiron, the wounded healer, okay, the, the wounded healer who, this is all about wounds from early childhood development, okay, um, which some people have obviously very, very traumatic wounds from early childhood. Okay, obviously some people, not so much. But if you're one of those people who does, who had a very, and I honestly, I venture to guess probably 70% of my clientele had some pretty traumatic stuff go on for them in their childhood. Well, let's heal those things. Let's work on, that's what Chiron's all about. He wants to heal those things. And you know, if you entertain the possibility of previous lifetimes, Chiron's wounds can also have a lot to do with that. So it's like healing those karmic wounds since he's coming in with that North Node in the aggressive sign of Aries. Okay, so there's that. I think I covered everything I wanted to hear. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna leave that there so this doesn't get too long. Let's talk about body parts. Okay, so Pisces is the most, like, Pisces rules the feet. Most commonly, like if you look it up on the internet or whatever, you're gonna see Pisces rules the feet or an astrology book, Pisces rules the feet. Of course, Pisces does rule the feet. It's the last sign of the zodiac, the feet are at the bottom, okay? And a lot of Pisces can have very, very sensitive feet. Uh, if, if you're early degrees Pisces, let's say you're born February 19th or something, then it would be more about the heel, okay? Then if you're born at the end of Pisces season, around March 18th or 19th, then some Pisces can be born March, March 20th, that's rare. Uh, but then it would be like the tip of the toes, okay? So we're all receiving all this energy. Keep in mind, Venus is just about to move into Pisces right after this new moon. So we have Saturn, the constrictor. We've got the sun and moon. We've got uh, Neptune and Pisces and just about to have a lot of energy going around the feet. It's definitely a good idea to be very, very careful with your feet. In fact, I'll say this, a lot of Pisces will have, again, like sensitive feet, but also a lot of times when people have either Mars or Saturn in Pisces, they will have problems with feet. Those are considered the malefics. Don't get me wrong. I love Saturn and Mars for their own reasons, but uh, Saturn can create bunions on feet. Um, Mars can create injuries on the feet, that sort of thing. So you might want to be mindful of that if you've got those things. If you've got your Saturn or your Sun or your Mars, really anything in the sign of Pisces, be mindful of your feet. But also Pisces rules very important parts of the body. Pisces really has a massive influence on the lymphatic system. I mean, really Pisces has a massive influence on the fluids in the body, including like a phlegm, okay? Which that sounds nasty, but it's true. Pisces has, it's, it's the, the fluids of the body, but mostly the, the, the um, lymphatic system, okay? So 
with this kind of transit, especially if you already have issues with the lymphatic system, it's just a really good idea to take a little extra care of the lymphatic system. I know there's all kinds of special massages. As far as from my understanding anyway, it's a good idea to be very, very gentle. It's like soft touches or, or tapping around certain lymph nodes, that sort of thing. No, I mean, I'm not a doctor and I'm not trying to offer any kind of medical advice, but I'm, for me, I wouldn't be like rubbing a nip, lymph node really hard when we're experiencing this kind of a, a Neptune influence, a, Nept, a Pisces influence. Uh, but also red root can be really good for moving, getting red root tea or tincture. You can get that uh, all kinds of places. I order it online, just make sure it's a higher quality one. Um, but that can help get the lymph moving, Okay. Uh, another thing Pisces rules over is like the the coordination of of the glands, the glands in the body. Something that's really good for that is seaweed. But seaweed is excellent for everybody, really. It's packed with iodine. Um, not everybody likes seaweed. You can also just get like kelp capsules or something like that. Dulce. I really like all kinds of seaweed. I am a Pisces. I I, I literally crave seaweed. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those little packets of seaweed. Um, I, there's all different, all different brands, but I personally, I'll even like, like seaweed wraps. I will cut up an avocado and just put the avocado with some salt and pepper into the seaweed wrap and roll it up. And that's a really good a source of iodine. But again, it's also, it's good for the coordination of the glands. Seaweed can be really good stuff for Pisces. Okay, so let's see here, what else? And not only that, but I should also mention this. See, Pisces and Virgo are opposite each other. Like if Virgo's over here, Pisces is over here, they're opposite each other. Really, the sign of Virgo is kind of like the sign of our overall physical health, but the combination, the polarity between these things. And if anything's going on in the sign of Pisces, the opposite side of the zodiac, that's gonna be the case for any zodiac sign. If something's going on over here, it's there's it's getting activated over here as well. Clearly not as strong. Like if this is Pisces and this is Virgo, there's a ton of Pisces energy going on over here. There's nothing in Virgo, but that sign of Virgo is still being activated. That's why I was in the very beginning of this video, I'm talking about if you got something in the sign of Virgo that's opposing the sign of Pisces, it's getting activated in your chart. Okay. Uh and the the, the polarity between these zodiac signs actually rules over the entire immune system, okay? So it's a really good idea to just be taking a little extra care of these things during this kind of lunar transit. For the immune system, there's so many things we can do. My favorite, hands down, is medicinal mushrooms of all kinds. I live in the forest, so I go out and harvest my own turkey tails, polypores of all kinds, red belted polypores, um, uh, agaricon. Um, there's another one. I can't remember the name of it. It grows on a pine tree. Anyway, I love, yeah, you don't have to harvest your own. Not everybody lives where there's medicinal mushrooms. You probably live close to somewhere where there's medicinal mushrooms because they grow everywhere. But I mean, at least in the forest and in the, in the woods somewhere. So if you don't want to go out and harvest your own, which I don't recommend going out and harvest your own mushrooms if you're not educated on that, because it could be very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Um, turkey tails are really easy, but they just look like a turkey tail. But still, I, I don't, unless you've got some sort of knowledge, it's easy to learn this stuff. There's a lot of books out there, lots of videos on it, uh, but you can get purchase medicinal mushrooms from pretty much any health food store <laughs> there it, because everybody is starting to realize how powerful and beneficial medicinal mushrooms are incredible immune boosters okay but of course there's so many other things you can do for the immune system i'm just naming off my, fa my favorite not a doctor not trying to offer any kind of medical advice whatsoever but those are just things that i've experimented with and stuff i've learned from my wonderful and beautiful teachers over the years okay so let's talk about gemstones uh, Pisces zodiacal birthstone, like dedicated zodiacal birthstone, is aqua marine, which this is a beautiful piece of aqua marine. It seems to be getting kind of dark in here. Let's see if I can turn my light up a little bit. Oops, that was down. Okay, there we go. This is aqua marine. The camera's just not going to pick up how beautiful this thing is. But it's in in ancient times, aqua marine was very specifically used for traveling overseas, like on the ships. Okay, it was said to keep them safe. Anytime I'm going on an airplane that requires me flying over and I don't like flying it at all. In fact, I, I, well, whatever, I'll do it, but I don't like it. And I always take my aquamarine, especially if I'm flying something that's going to require me to fly over the ocean. In fact, I'll be going on a cruise this summer with a family 
thing. It's not necessarily my first choice of um, vacation, but it's it's with my family, so I'm going to attend. And I will definitely be bringing my aquamarine. I, even going on a cruise terrifies the heck out of me, but I'll do it because I love my family. Uh, all right. Aquamarine can also, it's a very like ethereal, very mystical, very spiritual energy that we receive from aquamarine. I mean, if just think about the ocean, when you just go out and you just observe the ocean, which I know not everybody's even seen the ocean in their life, but even if you're watching it on TV or whatever, it's like breathtaking. And it's, it's, there's almost nothing more mystical than like watching the sunrise or the sunset over the ocean. Okay. And that's a very aquamarine kind of energy, but Another one, and by the way, aquamarine, you, there's very, there's expensive aquamarine, but then there's also very, very affordable aquamarine. It just depends on what kind of quality of aquamarine you want. Uh, this right here is fluorite. Again, I apologize. The camera is not picking it up because it's starting to get dark out. But fluorite usually comes in like a green and purple blend. Sometimes you'll just find it in all green. Sometimes you'll find it in all purple. Sometimes you'll find it in yellow. Yellow uh, fluorite is also very beautiful. This is another one. It's kind of a similar energy. Okay, Flory is is also very like a mystical sort of just Piscean overall energy can definitely enhance the intuition. I've also heard of Flory being good. This is going to sound pretty wild, but fluorite can be sort of like anti-cancer, like put like holding fluorite. I actually just know some stories of women who have had lumps in their breasts and put fluorite, little pieces of fluorite in their in their bra. Uh, which if you have lumps in your breast, it's really not a good idea to wear a bra unless it's a bra that's very specifically made to allow for lymph to flow. Bras will, for the most part, 99% of the bras out there are going to restrict the lymph flow, okay? But, you know, there are good bras out there that won't do that. But I've heard a lot of stories of uh, going a little deep here, but when putting fluoride in their bra, to help along with other things like doing integrated medicine and all sorts of, you know, immune boosters and, and have been able to get rid of lumps in their breasts. So there's that. I don't want to give anybody false hopes, but I have heard of that. Um, okay. Next up, we'll talk about blue lace agate also resonates very, very well with the sign of Pisces. One of my favorite stones uh, because it's so calming and so grounding. I mean, honestly, I love all agate. I love it. There's something about it that's it's not some you know crazy expensive stone or anything like that, but it's just a very soothing energy to me. It can also be good for the nervous system. Again, that resonates very well with the sign of Pisces. The last one I'm going to mention, if you notice, like this is just completely different, completely different than the other stones I held up. This is called bloodstone, which blood. Okay, let's talk about this. Bloodstone resonates very, very well with the sign of Pisces, but it also resonates well with the sign of Aries. If you remember, we got Mercury in Aries and we got the North Node and Chiron in Aries, and we're going to be having a total solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. That's going to be on April 8th. Uh, so Bloodstone can be really good for that. Not only that, but Bloodstone is also grounding. Like I'm showing you these very like sort of uh, dreamy stones, and then all of a sudden, uh, like this is a lot more like dense energy. But another thing is that we talked about all that Aquarius energy that's going on, right? Venus in Aquarius, Mars in Aquarius, which Mars can agitate whatever zodiac sign he's going through. And so can Pluto. Pluto's also kind of like a malefic energy, okay? He's rough, he's brutal. He's great for certain things, but Pluto's also a pretty brutal energy going through the sign of Aquarius. Well, the sign of Aquarius, please understand where I'm going with this. Aquarius does not rule the blood itself. But what Aquarius does rule is corruption in the blood, like the poison in the blood, uh, say some kind of an injection that was not good for the bloodstream. Or, you know, a lot of times when um, your your colon is, is incredibly backed up and toxic, that can leak toxins into the bloodstream. Well, that the toxic blood, that is under the rulership of a, under the sign of Aquarius. Okay, so, and this is all coming from my resources would be the Encyclopedia of Medical Astrology. Also, majority of the stuff that I've learned from medical astrology comes from Judith Hill, who's a, a, an incredible medical astrologer with <laughs> more experience than probably anybody else on earth uh, and, and has written, I don't know, 20 books at this point. She's got a new book coming out, by the way. Can't wait to share that. But so what I'm talking about is this can also be good for helping to keep the blood clean. 
Okay, so I think I covered everything. I hope I didn't make this too long. I hope I made it fairly interesting for you guys. If you would like to schedule an astrology reading, please do visit erinwageastrology.com. You can schedule straight through my website. And when you schedule, you will see there's a little place to leave a note. So if there's something very specific that you want to focus on for your reading, you can leave that in the note. Okay, you guys, I do hope to hear from some of you. And until next time, namaste to all of you.